Hey boys and girls. Today we are going to learn about perspective drawing. This drawing will be for second, third, and fourth, particularly and mainly third and fourth grade. Um, so what is perspective drawing? That is when an artist makes the drawing look like it's going back into the distance. For example, this very basic one point perspective drawing it looks like the road is getting smaller and vanishes as it goes back into the distance of the focal point, into the vanishing point. So these trees look like they're getting smaller. These buildings look like they're getting smaller. That is one point linear perspective where we are kind of tricking our eye to make the image appear smaller as it gets to the background. I'm gonna go over some definitions to make this all sound a little bit easier. So we have quite a few definitions to go over and I'm gonna share a little bit of the history about one point perspective in a minute. Okay, so um, there are different types of perspective, okay? So artistic perspective is making a drawing look like it's going back into the distance and to create depth. That is my definition, okay? Linear perspective, it actually uses mathematics. It involves measuring. Um, it involves like making and drawing the right calculations so that your drawing turns out with the right perspective. It, it looks correct. Um, so it's all it involves a lot of close observation and it allows artists to trick the eye into seeing depth on a flat surface. Okay, in a perspective drawing, in any kind of landscape drawing, that's a picture of outside, you need a horizon line, even in an indoor drawing. That is where the land and the sky meet. So this little picture right here, this is called a horizon line. Every picture has one, okay? Um, I have just this little picture from a calendar. It's a lake and some mountains. This right here is the horizon line because we need a place for our eye to see the sky and the land. Well, in this case, it's water. Okay, same in my little drawing. The perspective, the horizon line is actually right here. It's kind of covered up with some buildings and some trees, but there is a horizon line here to separate the sky from the land. All right, let's keep going on with our definitions. So next to create one point one point perspective, you need to create a vanishing point. Okay, so this is where the focal point happens. Okay, so this is where our eye is going to be led into the distance. So the vanishing point is the single point on the horizon line where all the lines seem to meet and come together. And then we have um, orthogonal lines, which I'll explain while I'm drawing. Um, but these are lines that cover, I'm sorry, that converge at the vanishing point to create the illusion of depth, okay? All right, I know that's a lot, but you are going to see these things come into action when we start our drawing. Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of a history about perspective. So back in the Renaissance times, that was in 1450 to about 1600 artists were creating very flat pictures that didn't really have a depth or a background um, and they looked very strange i have some examples on my computer of some pictures that have really really bad perspective so i'm, I'm gonna try to see if this works here so here's one picture from all the way back in the renaissance times so it looks like this artist was trying to create like two rooms coming together and then create this little background. They didn't follow any of the rules of perspective and that's why the drawing and the painting looks very skewed and off. Okay, these people like sitting below the bed, this person just like doesn't seem to be quite right on top of the bed. So the, there's a lot of things going on that, that are wrong. So 
back in that day, no one really figured out mathematically how to, to create drawings correctly. So later on came Raphael and Leonardo da Vinci, which those names should ring a bell because those are Renaissance artists who are mathematicians and they figured out the correct formula and they figured out this one point perspective. Um, so these are actually in my slide that I attached. Okay, so let's look at this one. So this is Raphael's School of Athens. This is a super famous, popular, well-known work of art. And as you can see in the lines in blue, there is a vanishing point. There's the vanishing point, the focal point where all the lines go back into the distance to make the drawing successful. It's mathematically correct. Raphael figured that out. Also, our other friend, Leonardo da Vinci, he was the other guy who figured out perspective. So in this one, we have The Last Supper and we have Mona Lisa. Both of them have elements of one point perspective in there. So if we fade out the disciples and Jesus sitting at the table, you get a clear, accurate map of the one point perspective. So there's our vanishing point, horizon line coming in here. And then all those orthogonal lines lead our eye to the vanishing point. This drawing is correct and mathematically done correct. Thanks to Leonardo da Vinci. So those two guys made it easy for all of us to create correct drawings. And while I have this up, I'll show you all some of my perspective drawings. So here is one I did. It it shows a room that opens into another room that leads your eye into an empty room or a dark room. So I, in order to do this drawing, I had to create a vanishing point and I had to use my orthogonal lines to make the drawing look correct. The horizon line is just somewhere in the middle. I also did a one point perspective. So the one point is about here. I centered it off. It's skewed off. So we're, we're used to kind of looking at the ones that go in the center, but you can offset your voc your um, vanishing point. And then lastly, these are just a couple different examples. This one's a painting, but you can still see that there is a vanishing point, which is the uh, little doorway. Okay. I did that one to, uh, was inspired by Monet. Okay, so now that we've covered a little bit of the history and some vocabulary, you are going to be creating a drawing with one point perspective, kind of like this one. Um, and just to not confuse anyone, I wanted to quickly go over that there is another type of perspective um, so I think I got this from Mrs. Labaz, but there is also an ELA um, when teachers talk about character perspective. So character perspective is what um, is the way a character sees things or thinks about a situation. So like in a situation, everyone can have their own point of view or own thoughts about a certain topic. So in a character perspective, um, it is how great readers determine a character's point of view or perspective by getting to know the character, by considering their age, role, or experiences, looking at the character's actions to get to know their perspective a little bit more, like by understanding their actions, dialogues, or thoughts. You could also ask yourself, what is the character's automatic mental state at this moment? So like, what is the character thinking or how does he or she think or feel? Um, and then they connect their automatic mental state to their feelings or motivation. Okay, so perspective is, is different. Artistic perspective is much different than character perspective. So I just wanted to touch on that just in case you hear that word again. But for this lesson, we're focusing on artistic perspective. Um, that was a lot. 
to handle, I know, but we are going to get into drawing um, in just a few minutes. 